So the first type of magic is when someone is turned away from another. They begin to hate them. It's called Sihru Sarf. They turn away from your father, from someone else. They, and how does this happen? Like the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Man sahara faqad ashrak. Did you hear that? Clear words. Clear words. Whoever has done magic has engaged in shirk. They have associated partners with Allah. What does that mean? You just removed yourself out of the fold of Islam. That's what it means. Whoever participates in magic, black magic, magic, any types of magic. You know, one is uh, a trickster, conjurer who's a trickster. He's quick, quicker than your eye. So he shows you, he pulled something out of his sleeve. What was it? A rabbit. <laughs> He's just faster than your eye. You know, he put his hand here and suddenly took it out and there's a flame. <laughs> Have you seen that? Sometimes it's just a trickster, a person who knows he's very quick, he's faster than your eye. That's all it is. You can actually train to become one. I don't know why you would, but anyway, you know, <laughs> people are entertained. They'll pay 200 ringgits to see a trickster, but they won't pay 100 ringgits to listen to how to get to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So, one is a person who's a trickster. The other is a magician, a person who uses the jinn in order to do things. You know, he'll slice your body into two, take one to that side of Kuala Lumpur and the other to the other side. The problem is when they can't fix it back. Then <laughs> you got an issue, major issue. What's it? Ah, I thought it was going to work. No. I remember someone tell me that no, they connected one person's body, top body to another person's bottom body. And I was thinking to myself, it's all sihr, you know. If it depends how they've done it. So it happens sometimes with the assistance of jinn. I had a young brother who was going into, he was a trickster initially, and they tried to lure him into becoming a full-fledged magician with the assistance of jinn. And he said, Wallahi, there are rituals we have to start performing. Why? Because Allah says, Hal ala man Surah Shu'ara. Should we tell you whom these jinn, shayateen, descend to? You know, we ask ourselves, okay, well, the jinn goes to those people. Why doesn't the jinn come to me and say, hi, what can I do for you? You know, what can I do for you? And you say, oh, I need uh, a million ringgits, please. And then he says, look at the ceiling. And suddenly a hundred starts floating, coming down. He says, you see, another hundred starts coming down. You see, it doesn't happen to us. Why not? It would solve all our problems, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. It would create bigger problems for us. I wonder what the tax man would tell you. May Allah forgive us. So, when a person starts involving with shayateen and the jinn, Allah says, should we tell you whom the jinn descends to? Who does the jinn go to? What a powerful verse. Surah Shu'ara. Allah says, the jinn comes down to those who are liars. Affakin. They create slander and tales. They are sinful people. Athim. People who constantly engage in sin. They have to have done something. Sometimes people flush the Quran down the loo. Do you know that? In order to get control of a jinn. Sometimes the people write the Quran with defecation. Na'udhu billah. Astaghfirullah. I'm just letting you in on what really happens. And then they get control of a jinn. The jinn comes. Why? Shaitan is so happy you become a ringleader as well. You have crossed a certain threshold after which you will get control of some jinn. And what do they do with these jinn? They use them. And why, do, why is the jinn ready to be used? Because the jinn is so happy that you have now turned away from Allah. You are out of the fold of Islam. You can be reading your salah. You can be giving your zakah. You can be doing everything. The fact is you are engaging in major shirk. That's what it is. You are engaging in a major type of seeking assistance from that which is besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in the form of the unseen, the jinn kind. And what will happen? They will lead you from one to another. Once you enter that territory, Territory to come out is very, very difficult. Remember that. Once you enter that territory to come out is so difficult. This is why when people go to the fortune teller once, 
they will end up going there for another 10 years, every little while. And the irony is the fortune teller keeps changing what he's told you or she's told you. You know, I know of a young man who went to four different fortune tellers. The four of them told him so many different things. And when he told him, but someone else told me a different thing, you know what they said? They said, well, somehow through your prayers, the things have just changed. <laughs> now you want to say through your prayers, it's changed. It's just that you're swiping. You're just taking a chance. When it comes to wealth, two ways of doing it. You can either legitimately earn, which is prolonged, or you can illegitimately achieve, which might be instant, but it is wrong and it will result in long-term regret. The same rule applies with your sickness and illness. You can either have your cure in terms of medication, which is correct, yes, together with dua and calling out to Allah alone and probably asking others to make dua for you, which is something we're allowed to do as Muslim. You're allowed to ask others, please pray for me. And you're allowed to even tweet it out or put it on Facebook. I'm not feeling well. Please pray for me. The people of the world may pray for you. You can be cured through prayer and through medication. Subhanallah. The minute you want to go to someone who is going to throw three bones at you and tell you that your sister-in-law has put magic on you, that is the very moment that you have done the same thing that the thief has done when he earned a million bucks and solved his problem, but he will regret all his life and even in the life after death. For some reason, there is dead silence here. Allahu Akbar. Let's hope that's not happening to us. The biggest deviation. Those innocent people are being accused by someone who claims to know the unseen. Do you know how they operate? I will tell you this evening in order to equip you with that knowledge. They have a link with the jinn sometimes. That too is prohibited. Allah says in the Quran, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا In Surah Al-Jinn, Allah speaks about it. Allah says, part of the things that are mentioned, He says, and from amongst the issues that are taking place, there are people from mankind who are seeking assistance from those of jinn kind and those of jinn kind are leading them further astray. That's a Quranic verse. Open Surah Al-Jinn and read it. Ya ma'ashar al-jinn qad istakthartum min al-ins. I love that verse because it wakes us up. Oh, jinn kind, you have made enough fools out of mankind. Allahu Akbar. One of the translations of that verse. Oh, jinn kind, it's enough what you've done. You've already taken a lot of these people and hoodwinked them. So they would seek the assistance of a jinn who will immediately communicate with a qareen that is with you. Qareen that is with you means when Allah created you, He created your soul and put it into a uniform known as your body. This uniform, you're going to take it out when you die and your, your soul will continue. I hope you understand the way I've worded it. Yours is the soul. Allah has created it. He put it into this uniform known as a body. When you die, you remove your uniform and the soul is gone. With that uniform, two other elements. There is an angelic angel, an angelic force, and there is a devil. That Karim from the jinn kind, he communicates immediately with that jinn of the man whom you went to go and see. And you know what? He says, this sister has a pinched nerve at the fourth, uh, uh, you know, vertebra at the bottom of her back. And it's in the left corner. If you are just to give her, for example, this piece of paper and tell her to take five roses and cut their petals into that which is not more than 0.01 grams and take 16 lemons and cut them into quarters and put them around those petals and take the piece of paper and burn it and push it into the center, then I will actually flick out that pinched nerve. So this man with a big beard, mashallah, pink turban that is as long as ever, mashallah, you know, huge item. And he tells you, say, subhanallah. You say, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Say, alhamdulillah. Say, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right, now let me tell you what's wrong with you. You need to take this, these petals and these lemons and this piece and do this and do that. And you need to do everything together and you will be better. So you say, shukran, jazakumullah khair. You know, mashallah, this man did not take any money. Nothing happened. He took your iman. That's what he did. 
And sometimes he doesn't know because his diamond is also that Chinese one we spoke about. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's a fact. So now what happens? You come and you do all that and suddenly you are better. You are better. Well, you will be better. Why? Because the devil has cured you. You stole your cure. The devil, the jinn knows exactly what happened. And the jinn knows exactly where you are standing. Subhanallah. So you were cured. Your back is cured. Mashallah. Now that man is a saint. Do you know that? And you send so many people to him. But Allah says, hang on. Do you know you can even earn money through stealing? Do you know that? You become an instant millionaire through robbery. But that does not make you a person who did something right. No. You will say, wow, I got the money. But it does not make you right. So you're saying, wow, I'm cured. But it does not make it right. You will be cured. But you suffer the consequence of it. What is the consequence? They will put a tag. They dangle something. The first thing they did, they will laugh at Allah and have insulted the messenger to say, ha, 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 ha. You told them to put their head, your, their head on the ground. We promised you we will deviate them. Here they are. They're ready to cut lemons and they're ready to put roses and they're ready to do things that made no sense for us, not for you. Do you know? They just took away your iman. They made you worship the devil and you don't even know. And you're happy. You're still saying, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us understanding. So now, they will tell you, do you know who did it? A member of your family did it. Why do they say that? Every time by default, that is the answer. Sometimes they will pinpoint a person's name. They will show you, look up into the wall. When you look up, you see a face. Wow. Hey. No, I'm not joking. I'm honest with you. You'll see a face. The face. Hey, that's my sister-in-law. Okay, right. I know. I know what happened. Wallahi, that was the jinn. That's all. What is the job of the jinn? To break your family ties. That's point number one. Go and read the hadith. Allah explains it through the blessed lips of that messenger whose mission was to show you how Allah wants to be worshipped. And here we are thinking, wow, you know what? This is true. I've seen it with my eyes. And then they tell you, no, you know what? Just read a lot of salah. Read a lot of salah. So in your heart, you're thinking, subhanallah, this cannot be wrong. The man is telling me to read Quran. He's telling me to read Salah. But now I hate my sister. I hate my sister-in-law. I hate my mother. My mother is a witch and my auntie is a witch and everybody else is doing so much witchcraft and I am the person everybody's against me and everybody's bombarding me and nobody has done anything, nothing at all. There are innocent people whom you are accusing because you have worshipped the devil. Allahu Akbar. And we become so deep in it that we cannot do without it. My brothers and sisters, that's not how a Muslim should operate. Pray and keep praying. I have seen the power of prayer. It will deliver you from whatever you have been suffering from. Believe me. But you need to be constant. Maintain it. Turn to Allah. How can we want Allah to cure us when we are on the wrong page? Sometimes forget about the wrong page. We're in the wrong book altogether. Allahu Akbar. And we want Allah to cure us. What type of deviation is this? Wallahi, we should understand. If someone claims that X and Y did it, let me tell you. And I'm telling you because I know what I'm talking about. If that jinn was told you are lying, the jinn will change the name. If the jinn says, Abdullah did this to you, you say, you are lying. He says, okay, Abdurrahman did it to you. <laughs> say, no, you are lying. Okay, Fatima did it to you. You are lying. Okay, Khadija did it to you. That proves that the jinn is a liar. Allah says, the jinn is making fools of you, oh man. And we are busy saying, no, he told the truth. Because you don't know how that man operated. The man who gave you the answer, you don't even know how he operated. But this is what they're doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Iqra.